good evening everyone my name is Chris Cooper known as the channel guy trader and I'm reporting to you live from Wall Street Trading's Miami office down in sunny South Florida today's date is third Tuesday June the 25th 2013 and here is today's after the bell market summary brought to you by wallstreettrading.com on a quick note the website is back up so you can definitely go check out some of the free education stuff that we have on there along with the video archives and a lot of good information on that site so make sure you go to check it out let's go and take a look to see how the markets uh, closed today we had the Dow Jones closed up a little over 100 points and Nasdaq closed up 27 points and the S&P 500 closed up just about 15 points we take a look at the breadth on the market today we had 4712 issues advancing on the NYC Nasdaq and the AMX and we had 1445 issues declining on the NYC Nasdaq and the AMX so therefore breadth was in favor um, to the bulls uh, looks about a little over three to one ratio there if we take a look at some of the sectors that performed pretty well today looking at my heat map here I can see that the uh, technology sector was pretty decent we had some decent strength and some strength in some of the telecom services Verizon showed some nice relative strength today we'll take a look at that chart uh, the financials were strong today Bank of America was up uh, three percent JP Morgan up two and a quarter Citigroup was up closer, three and a half percent. PNC up three percent. So there, there was a lot of action in the financial sector today. Seen a lot of money flowing into some of those names. And aside from that, everything else was pretty much mixed. Um, we'll take a look at the markets here um, again here shortly. But you know, just just to touch base with everything, the markets were choppy today. Today was a pretty good day to you know trade light, or better yet, not even trade at all and just sit on hands. Of course, it's easy to say that hindsight, but at the same time, you know there was there was some intraday opportunities and then at the same time there are some points throughout the day where you can say where you could notice that man this thing's just choppy I'm probably better off sitting on my hands or not doing anything today but aside from that let's go and take a look at the chart starting off with the SPY uh, daily chart SPY closed at uh, closed at 158.57 SPY was up a dollar 51 and we bounced right off of this 156.84 area alright yesterday we sold off below 157 and we were able to recoup that uh, loss intraday and today we got a little slight gap up a little selling pressure and they ride us up and we managed to sell back down off the highs alright um, again this this 157 level right here is pretty rock solid if you guys watch some of the previous videos that I that I've uh, done I talked about watching this key area on 157 that came from this little consolidation that we had back here in March all right, and then that was a nice little level to retest. So you have prior resistance, right? Now becomes support. So that's the action that we had right there, and we were able to recover the 100-day simple and exponential moving average in the daily time frame. Still have a lot of technical damage done. Um, you know, we did break this little short-term uptrend that we had right here from this little pivot low. This little pivot low, we did break that level right there, which happens to be around 161. So we have that resistance to worry about from the trend line resistance. We have the horizontal price resistance to worry about around the 161 area as well. And then we have this declining moving averages here. So we have three different types of resistance from the trend line break. Right, so from the trend line break to the price support level that broke and then to these moving averages. We have three different forms of resistance. So this is definitely going to be a tough area to try to break back above. But if we could do that, that would definitely give you a sign that the bulls are trying to get back into control here. And if we continue to hold below 161, we trade sideways, that'll probably be setting us up for, um, you know, some more chop action or better yet, another leg down below 157 to possibly go back towards the 153 area. Um, you know, that's how the SPY is looking. Let's go and take a look at the uh, NASDAQ via the triple Qs. All right. The NASDAQ. Same thing for the NASDAQ. It came back right to this little consolidation chop action that we had from, from back here in March. All right. We we broke we uh bounced right off, of, off of that level yesterday which happens to be around 69 and now we're trying to get back above say the 71 area still a lot of technical damage done on the triple q chart as well we really need to get back above the 7150 level and hold above that level right there and then we'll have to worry about 7350 but if we continue to hold below 7150 we could look for some more chop action as these uh, buyers try to carve out some type of support down here or better yet we could be setting up for another leg down now let's take a look at the IWM the Russell 2000 alright and the Russell <clears throat> got a bounce off the 100 day simple and exponential moving average right here at this 93 92 level call it 94 
and we're back above this little pivot that we had right here from back in March. So if we can hold above this 95 level, we could probably get some little upside action. But again, we have all these little short-term moving averages that are going to act as resistance. And not only that, we have this little support that broke right here around 96.50 that's going to be acting as resistance. So you got to keep an eye on that 96.50 level and keep an eye on this 95 level. We break back below 95, we could go back down towards yesterday's lows around 94. Um, I was not able to do a week in review video, so I wasn't able to touch base on some of the things I want to take a look at with you guys, such as the Treasury bonds, which still continue to get slammed to the downside. Um, that head and shoulders pattern that we talked about on the weekly chart a month or so ago, uh, well, actually we talked about it back here in, uh, the, back here in say, mid-May. That's still breaking down, and that measured move takes us all the way down from 111 to 130. All right, so that's actually 111 to 131. So we're talking about $20 there. So $20 minus the 111 would take us down to uh, let's see what's that uh, 91. All right, yeah, take us down to 91. Yeah, so take us down to 91, and that's you know that's could be telling us you know money's coming out of bonds, but the stocks if if the stocks sell off as well, then where's the money going? Is it just going to the cash, going to the sidelines? We don't know. But, uh, you know, it's been all over the media now that the bonds are going down, the stocks are going down, and uh, this is definitely something to keep a close eye on. We have a lot of news um, from overseas with the Chinese supposedly in a liquidity crisis or could be entering into a liquidity crisis. We do know they own a lot of our bonds, so maybe they could be the cause of some of this bond selling that we have going on along with, you know, fund managers and everybody else selling bonds as well since rates are starting to rise up. And you guys know rates go up, uh, you know, bonds go down finance uh, 101 so keep an eye on the TLT if the you know this if this starts to tick off if this starts to kick up a little bit more and speed to the downside we definitely want to make sure we keep an eye on these markets to see how they react to that uh, it's going to take a look now at the volatility index the VIX has been making a fast uh, fierce move up the past couple of weeks here uh, and I, even, not, I don't want to say fast and fierce I mean we had a breakout we had a breakout last week Thursday, chopped around a bit, had an even higher high that was made yesterday, and then today we're back down. So we just got to watch it. I mean, if we stay at above this uh, 16 level, near the bottom of this range, start building up a higher base, that would be something to watch as well. Just something to keep on the radar. But you guys know every time they bring the VIX up, they will sell it off, bring it up, they sell it off, bring it up, they sell it off, bring it up, they sell it off. So we, this is another gauge that we're going to be using to kind of uh, gauge the fear that... Uh, you know, that has been in the market for the past couple of weeks or so with the slow selling pressure we've been getting in here. So that's something to keep on watch. We could take a look at the dollar index and see what these currencies have been doing here. The dollar index back above that key 82 level looking like it wants to make its way back up to 83. That would be a prior retest. That would be a retest of the prior support. Of course, it's now going to be resistance. All right, this dollar strength will gauge these uh, commodity stocks and see how they react to this dollar movement that's moving to the top side. Uh, let's take a look at the euro dollar, euro USD. All right, euro USD, we're back below that key 132 level, and if we continue to sell off, we could go back down towards this level down here around 130. Again, we don't trade the currencies, but we just like to track them and see how the equity markets react to them, along with the different uh, asset classes like the bonds and uh, the commodities and stuff like that. Now let's go ahead and run a, a quick little. Uh, let's go ahead and take a quick little look at this commodities here. Starting off with gold. All right, gold got crushed last week. All right, um, you know, one pattern that you can see here that I actually included in our uh, our education course, which is done by the way. So if you're interested in signing up or checking out the details on our education course, which will be up on the website pretty soon, the new updated course that we have here with the new details, what's included in it, and everything like that. Um, that will be up on the website here shortly. But, you know, this was a pattern that I included in the course here. This is an inverted cup and handle pattern. You got your little cup, got your little handle, and you got your little breakdown that took place last week. And that uh, gives us a measured move of 1350 to 1475 So we're talking about $125. So 125 minus the 1350 could take us down to 1225 So that's about another $50 to the downside in gold. So I would not be a buyer in any kind of gold stocks or try to pick the bottom or try to, you know, slowly get into gold miners or anything like that until gold gets down there towards those 1225s. You got a couple of people on CNBC coming out like Mark Faber, Dr. Doom, I believe his little nickname is. He said he was buying some gold miners, but at the same time, I don't think they're ready to buy yet. 
I even had my old man asking me about uh, is it time to buy some silver, and I told him we want to wait. You know, we want to wait till it shows really shows some type of support. You don't want to buy these precious metals yet; they're still looking pretty weak. And if more bad news comes out of out of out of uh, China, showing that there's uh, really that there's really no inflation, or you know that inflation data starts to come out uh, worse. It's already, you know, the data is already showing that uh, there is no inflation like the government was trying to create. And that's, I think that has to do part of the reason why we're seeing these uh, precious metals have been getting crushed for the past four or five months. And, uh, you know, now that the, now that the uh, I guess you could say the retail traders or the late people to the party are starting to realize that now they're starting to sell their holdings. And now we're just seeing this nice little sell off in, these, in this whole sector. But uh, you know, I would stay away from the precious metals. They're definitely uh, not nothing that you want to be in right now. Uh, you, you know, there's more opportunities out there in uh, different sectors. All right, so that's how that's looking. The gold miners, the crude oil, and all that, uh, the commodities and everything. Let's go and take a look at some stocks here. Starting off with Apple, since I know a lot of you guys out there like to trade Apple and like to see how Apple's doing. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Okay, so Apple was down, uh, down. Well, it wasn't down. It was flat. It was up nine cents. But you can see here the chart still technically damaged. It's below 4.20. Uh, next support level on Apple is going to be down here around this little double bottom down here around 3.85, which I think that's where it wants to go. So, still some more downside on Apple, which means there's definitely still some more possible downside for the Nasdaq. You take a look at Amazon. Amazon has been one of the stocks that we're trying to. That has been trying to show some strength here after breaking above this little downward uh, bullish channel right here. We got a bounce off the 100 day simple moving average yesterday, and now we're trying to hold it up back above this 270. If Amazon can stabilize above 270 while the market trades uh, like it is right now, these little ch this choppy, um, choppy action or even downside action, if Amazon can stay above 270, this will definitely be a go to stock to look at when the market catches a real bid. All right, so keep Amazon on watch. We had Verizon show some uh, decent relative strength today. This one looks pretty interesting. We have a little low pivot right here. It's trying to carve a little higher pivot base down here around 49. This thing could probably make its way back up towards 5150, which is obviously the target. Anybody that bought the stock today along their target that they have on uh, their, prop, their first profit target is 5150. So this stock may have uh, some more upside potential tomorrow. So we definitely want to keep an eye on the Verizon. Uh, the financials are strong today. Bank of America is one of the stronger ones out there. You know, it was up 3%. Had a nice little move up today. Still has a lot of uh, technical damage on the chart. You can see it broke down below its 13 level. And uh, they was holding that 13 level for quite a while. So therefore, it needs to get really get back above 13 to uh, be bullish on that stock there. Uh, what else we had? Citigroup was up 3.5% today. This one looks pretty good. Uh, well, it looks it looked good today. The chart again. This chart's ugly as well. This chart needs to get back above 49. All right. Uh, what else here? We had Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan was one of the stocks we traded actually this morning here. It had a decent move out the out of the gate, but then kind of chopped around a bit, then slowly grinded higher, like a lot of things did today. But Goldman Sachs, this chart is back right at this little congestion area that it had back here in uh, let's see in March. So if you go hold above 149, that'll be pretty decent for a possible bounce here. Maybe it needs to chop around a bit here uh, before it tries to make a real move higher. And then J.P. Morgan, uh, let's see, J.P. Morgan was uh, decent today as well. This one needs to get back above 53 before you can really, you know, get bullish on it. Again, um, aside from that, <clears throat> some strength in some of the energy names. I'm seeing some strength in APC. Right, APC was up two and a half percent today. This chart needs to get back above 86. All right, you had some uh, decent action in the refiners, VLO, TSO. VLO is up 3.5% uh, today. This one still has a lot of technical damage done on it. Needs to get back above, I would say, this 38 area. Just going through a couple of names, guys, here. So some stocks that were you know, kind of bucking the trend today, showing some relative strength today. Uh, let's see, yeah, TSO, that really didn't do anything there. Uh, Lulu retail stocks were strong today. All right, we did have those Goldman store sales numbers that came out this morning. I'm assuming that was pretty bullish because some of these retail stocks just took off to the top side. Lulu had a nice little move up today. Intraday looked pretty good. Uh, Tiffany's had a nice little move today. It's up one one uh, little over one percent here, right on the 200-day move, right on the 100-day simple moving average and exponential moving average. 
um, you know, going over some more tech stocks real quick. I forgot about the semiconductors. Semiconductors were strong today. QCOM had a nice wolf day. Was up three, three and a quarter percent. Just about nice bullish candle there. We'll be watching this one tomorrow. Uh, let's see, QCOM was decent today. The solar stocks had some action today. FSLR was strong this morning, and uh, since we missed this one out of the gate, we took a look at SPWR. And this little sympathy trade worked for a little bit, but then it kind of fizzled out when the market started rolling right back over. Um, but you know, this is another stock to keep on watch if if the solars try to get a bounce. I mean, they have been strong. You know, they were they have been strong for the past couple months. They've been pulling back for the, you know, as of last month, and now they could be getting some buyers back in. So keep an eye on the solars as well. Aside from that, guys, uh, you want to be careful with this market. It's looking like it's going to start being a chop fest, uh, maybe for a couple more sessions. So trade it light uh, try to protect your capital and uh, make sure you get a chance when you get a chance to go to the website wallstreettrading.com and if you're interested in trading with our prop firm contact me at c cooper wallstreettrading.com we have offices uh, in new york and miami and uh, i can give you more details have a great day cheers